Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. My name is Aga Grandovic and I'm a wildlife artist. I usually draw animals, a bit of plants, but I focus on, on animals. And I use these illustrations, this drawing, this artwork in books, children books, or various publications related to biodiversity and, and wildlife. One of my projects is this book, uh, published in 2018 by Little Island. It's called Dr. Hibernica Finch's Compelling Companion of Irish Animals. It features 23 different animal species, starting from insects and ending with the huge killer whale, which is also present in the Irish waters. Not, of course, not very common, but if you are lucky, you can still see it, see it. So it's a children's book and it features a lot of my illustrations. And it's accompanied by a very witty text by Rob Maguire, who's an amazing uh, writer. And my most recent book, it's called Remarkable Creatures, a guide to some of Ireland's disappearing animals. And uh, it features 13, I'll unlucky 13 uh, endangered animal species. And not, it's, um, so it also has a lot of activities for kids, activities that are some, somehow related to this animal. So on every spread, we have the animal described and something what, what can be done by, by children to either learn about the animal or, or to help the animal, for example, for uh, for the owl, where is that owl here? For the barn owl, we have a nest box, okay, a blueprint of a nest nest box that the kids can can build with, with the parents. For the shark, we have a faux tooth we can make, we can make it of, of clay, modeling clay. Here for the butterfly, uh, which is called warbrown, uh, we have. Um, Butterflies made out of uh, seeds, buckets, okay, seeds with a uh, white flower meadow. Um, okay, and so that's it. So now let's uh, let's start preparing our materials for, for the workshop. So today we'll paint uh, with watercolors, and as a topic, I chose a meadow, a white flower meadow. So we'll need a watercolor paper. As you probably know, um, watercolor paper has a nice, nice texture, and it's quite thick, so it soaks um, water very well. So it doesn't um, it doesn't get, get thinner, and it's uh, you can paint many layers on top of each other for quite a long time. Okay, then of course we need watercolors. So I have this nice set which which has trays, and it's very very nice design because you can just attach it here okay and we have double tray of course uh, i don't expect you to have a similar set so you can use as a standard ceramic or plastic plate to to mix your colors and we need brushes okay so i have a few brushes i use most and uh, watercolor brushes have to be very soft Okay, so this one, you know, for very, very small ones, so for small details, and this one is for, for wider um, wider strokes, like for backgrounds, okay? And the next thing we, we need, but not necessarily, just if you have that, it's watercolor pencils. So, um, they the way they you work with them is, is a bit different than with standard pencils. So basically when you draw when you draw over wet paper they dissolve the color dissolves very nicely. So I will show you uh, some more details how uh, how to work with that. And of course because it's a watercolor we need a cup with water so I have it here filling. And yeah so I'll get everything ready here and I will see you in a moment. Bye bye so I'm, I'm mixing my um, green paints now, that will be the background of our meadow. And as you can see, it's quite dry at the moment, so I will add a bit more water. Okay, okay you can see it, it dissolves lovely. Okay, so I'll keep adding water and, and, and the paint. different shades of, of green, I mix it with, with a bit of brown, 
So just be brave, be confident when you when you paint. Now I'll show you a very cool effect which we'll achieve by using standard salt. Okay, so that's that's my salt here and I will sprinkle a bit on the wet paint. So what's important, the paint has to be still wet. And in a few minutes, when it dries, you see the paint kind of escaping, okay, from, from the area around the salt grains. And when it's all dry, we just swipe it and it'll be all, all very interesting. So here I can see there's already something happening. Okay, but we'll wait for this to, uh, to happen. Okay, so now I will just continue working here. Now this, I really like this brush because it has a, when it's wet, it has a pointy tip. So I can paint quite small, minuscule details. Okay, at the moment it just looks like a big piece of green, so I'm going to add some color. And I will start with, let's see, maybe a bit of yellow just to make some parts a bit brighter. you can paint over and over and over and it's still in a good shape. Other papers, papers would just, you know, get thinner, they would get um, ruined. So this one is still in a very good shape and will be like that for, for a while uh, longer. Now I will add some blue. Just little dots like that. Because I want it to be very sketchy. Okay, so now they look a bit like cornflowers. Okay, so maybe a bit stronger, a bit darker. Also, there's another thing to, to add little dots, another way to add little dots like that. So you just um, take a wet brush, okay, dip it in paint, and then using your fingers, spray it like that. Okay, some nice, nice effect. Just don't overuse it. small brush and I will add some maybe something brown like you know a bit of a dry plant let me see how it looks like okay that's fine As 
you can see because I'm painting wet in wet it um, all dissolves so it's not very well refined if we're painting on dry wet paint on dry paper that would be a bit different story but I want to keep it like that at least here Now let's add some, that's getting dry, so I'm going to add something a bit more um, refined, a bit sharper, so that will be our foreground. Now there are different watercolor papers, so you might want to try a few different brands just to see which one. Oh, this is nice and refined, uh, nice and sharp. Uh, you might want to see which brand um, you like most, because some are kind of plasticky. I do not find them nice. This this has a real paper feel, and you don't need to go to Art and Hobby. You can just go to to shops like these or Mr. Price, they have a wide range of art materials as well. Can see the, um, I hope you can see what what is happening here. So that's our salt. So it's drying, and then this this uh, paint just keeps moving away. So you see this, um, let's say cornflowers, they're very blurred at the moment, but that's okay, we'll keep them, some of them as, the, as our background, okay? And I'll add more lines when all gets a bit uh, dry. Okay, here we have some dry patches so I can fill those with, with a new layer of paint. And here. Now let's try to give it a bit different stroke, so I tend to, to uh, draw you know, short lines like that, but let's maybe keep it a bit, maybe something like a bit curved, like little spirals maybe, you know, there's such a variety of plants in nature, so I can think about that. Okay, I will let it, let it um, dry for a bit and in the meantime I will show you how to work with watercolor pencils. 
So I'll take a different piece of paper. Okay, now take a few few pencils. Okay, so there are two ways. The first one is we draw first without using the paint, the water. So, no, yeah, I should see it, okay. So let's eat some random plant, okay? And now we are going to use some paint or water. And you can see it dissolves, all oh, dissolves. You will not have the same eff effect with standard color pencils. Okay, and now the way number two is to draw on the wet paint. So like here, you can add extra details and it's a very nice actually feeling to, to paint like that on this wet paper. Again, if you try doing this with standard color pencils, it will be a completely different story. See, it just doesn't work like that. That might be a watercolor as well, right? Okay, this one is not watercolor. So it's a bit different. It doesn't dissolve like, like the other ones. Okay, you can just keep adding, keep playing with that. You can use your finger as well. Look at this blending. So there's so much to explore when it comes to painting with watercolors. That's why I think it's a, it's a very difficult, incredibly difficult technique to master. I hope one day I will. I'm just looking at the other uh, picture and I, I can see that it's, it's uh, quite dry and the uh, salt produced really lovely effects. So I'll show you that in a moment. So that's how we use the pencil. So now let's come back to the previous one. Okay, so look at this. What's going on here? Okay, that's quite quite interesting. Okay, I will add I will add some foreground uh, plants. Right. I need to mix a few greens because the ones I have none of them is perfect for what I want. So I need to a bit of mixing.
I'll add a bit more uh, blue for the flowers. We need to paint some dandelions because they are extremely important plants for for our pollinators. They flower very early and they are full of nectar, so many bees um, rely on them in the early months of the year and they are absolutely essential. So if you can grow some of them in your garden, that would be great. I know that many gardeners, including myself, I'm not too keen on having too many dandelions, but recently I actually started taking it easy and I don't even remove the dandelions because they are not only beautiful, but they have lots of um, um, other benefits. They are great herbs, so you can use the roots in tea, so you dry the roots and then um, pour over um, them boil boiling water sip for a few minutes and that's a great tea if you have for example a stomach ache and then you can use very young leaves in salads they have a bitter taste so not everyone might like it but but it's an interesting addition regardless now plants like the, um, daffodils they have almost no nectar so they're absolutely useless for pollinators but dandelions it's it's simply a must if you want to have a healthy ecosystem here. Now what about some foxgloves? So I'm getting, I'm mixing my um, pink and I'll put the, oh, it's a bit too dark. If it's something too dark you just add more water that usually helps, but of course sometimes you might need to change the color. some wildflowers meadows in your area so you could go there and paint directly from nature I tried to do that recently in Marley Park but there was no wildflowers apart from just, just a few um, dandelions here and there the reason for that is because the grasses in Marley Park I mowed way too frequently so all these beautiful native Irish plants they just don't have a chance to to grow. Unfortunately it's a very common thing to do for the cancers to, to cut too often although recently I noticed some improvements so they leave patches uh, which they mark as pollinator friendly but still in autumn they, they cut everything so that pollinator friendliness doesn't last too long. So you can spend actually hours nearly adding little bits and pieces and improving the artwork. Okay, but I think that for the purpose of this workshop this is this is fine as it is. I'll just add a few more bits here and there and, and we'll be done. Actually I'll just um, a brush. Take a different brush so this one will be a bit wider. And 
maybe why not to add some um, elements of the pencils okay that's not hot enough that's why it doesn't work well huh? okay few is better Okay, and that's it. I think. Ah, maybe one more thing. What about a little butterfly? Maybe orange. Okay, somewhere here in the at the back. And of course, a, a few dandelions, as I promised before. Here we go, that's our meadow. Now one more thing that's actually worth uh, thinking about, if you are doing some, let's call it a serious artwork, okay, it's, you can see that when you paint, the, the paper warps, warps a bit, okay, so it's not very straight, so the good thing to do is, is to use a paper tape and just stick the, um, the paper to the um, to your surface, it can be a clipboard like that one, before you start painting, okay? So while you paint it will still look like that, it will be a bit, you know, wavy, but while it dries out it will, it will get flat again. If we don't use the tape, like I did not do for this artwork, it will not get straight, Not it will not get fat, uh, flat. So we just need to, you know, just put some books maybe on top of that, or, or just, you know, don't, uh, we don't need to bother. Okay, so if it's an artwork you you want to keep it's better to use the the tape around it thank you so much for participating in this workshop and i hope you have created some lovely watercolor meadow art have a lovely day and maybe see you at another workshop bye bye